Nanogels for drug delivery. Imagine you have a dry sponge that you dip into water. When the water is absorbed, the sponge expands and holds it within. Then, you take the sponge to wherever you need it to be. When you're ready, you can squish to release the water and clean a specific spot. In biotechnology, scientists have developed nanogels that function similarly to sponges. A nanogel is a nano-sized particle that is made up of long polymer molecules cross-linked together. These polymer molecules are like the fibers of a sponge, and the network they make up is porous. When nanogels are introduced to water, they can swell. Other characteristics can also cause this swelling to occur. Scientists can then load therapeutic molecules such as drugs, proteins, or other various cargoes and use nanogels as a way to deliver them to the desired site. Nanogels tend to have high drug loading capacity. This means more of a drug can be loaded into its structure. Nanogels are loaded with a variety of techniques, but the end result is that the drug is trapped and ready to be delivered to the target location. Nanogels are considered highly tunable drug delivery systems and can be designed to release a drug in a very specific way. A sponge might hold water differently due to the size of its pores or the type of material. Similarly, the properties of a nanogel depend on the type of polymer used, the structure, the degree of cross-linking, and modifications to the network such as recognition proteins. By manipulating these and other factors, scientists can engineer a diverse range of gels. One of the main ways scientists can modify a gel is by making it responsive to a certain stimuli. Think back to the sponge. It doesn't release the water inside until you squeeze it. In this case, the stimuli is pressure. For nanogels, that stimulus is often pH or the temperature of the environment. These are important since it allows the drug to be released only under certain conditions. For example, in cancer treatment, this is especially helpful since tumors tend to be more acidic than the rest of the body, which means they can be targeted by pH-responsive nanogels. Nanogels are able to reach cells, such as those of a tumor, due to their soft nature and small size. A nanogel can be designed so it can penetrate the body's tissues to arrive in the correct spot. Some nanogels can even squeeze through pores 10 times smaller than them. Once at the correct site, the nanogels enter the cell. In a normal cell, the pH does not trigger release. However, in a cancer cell, the acidic pH causes the release of cargo. This could be because the gel shrinks or because the structure of the polymers degrade. Either way, the drug is able to move out of the nanogel and into the cell. The drug may trigger apoptosis, or death, in the cancer cell, such as in this case. This is an example of a simple nanogel but their systems can be very complex. Nanogels can even combine with other types of drug delivery systems, such as exosomes, which were described in a previous video. For example, an exosome containing helpful endogenous cargo could then be enhanced with additional cargo. Then, the nanogel could be loaded with the exosomes. One advantage to this system is to preserve the structure of the exosome. Combining two different drug delivery systems can help overcome the disadvantages of each. Nanogels can be tuned by modifying their characteristics and also the types of systems they can be combined with. Overall, the tunable and diverse nature of nanogels enables them to have a wide variety of possible applications. This is why many scientists are looking towards nanogels as a promising way to deliver future therapies for cancer, autoimmune, neurodegenerative diseases, and more. Currently, some nanogels are being tested at the clinical trial stage as there's still much to learn about how they are processed in the human body. Overall, nanogels stand as a promising area of research and drug delivery. Thank you for watching. Special thanks to the UNC School of Pharmacy and to the Newen Lab at UNC Chapel Hill.